The Solo One trial uh, is um, truly a landmark trial. This is a phase three randomized study that uh, enrolled women who have advanced ovarian cancer uh, and also have a BRCA mutation and who received standard of care chemotherapy and had an excellent response to that chemotherapy, either with a complete or partial response. The standard of care in that setting is either use of bevacizumab in some parts of the world or just observation. But we know that uh, unfortunately, uh, the majority of patients will recur within three years, and once they recur, they're no longer considered curable. And so, um, so we're trying, you know, the, the purpose of Solo One and other studies was to insert a, a maintenance therapy, in this case, Olaparib, which is a poly ADP ribose polymerase inhibitor or a PARP inhibitor, uh, following chemotherapy to try and push out the progression free survival which is defined as the time a woman um, lives without evidence of recurrent disease um, from the completion of chemotherapy until she either recurs or uh, until um, we reached kind of the data cutoff, which is sort of what happened. And so what we found uh, in this study, which again is randomized, two to one randomization, uh, is that uh, the women who received Olaparib, um, we have not even reached their median progression-free survival as of yet with at least three years of follow-up. And in fact, it's about 41 months of follow-up as compared to the women who were randomized to placebo who have a median progression-free survival of about 13.8 months. And so this uh, translates to a hazard ratio of 0.3 which is highly statistically significant. And said in another way, uh, use of Olapra of maintenance reduces the risk of recurrence by 70%. And the difference in progression-free survival that we see for women who receive Olapra versus those who received placebo is about three years longer than the group that received placebo. So we have women uh, going out now 47 to 49 months, um, either until they recur or until we censored the data because we did uh, the data cut point. So it's really um, an unprecedented improvement in progression-free survival. Uh, we've never seen anything close to this in frontline ovarian cancer. And so we'll be um, kind of immediately practice changing for our patients. Uh, some of the other key endpoints from the study that are just confirmatory of the benefit of Olaparib is that the progression-free survival 2, which is the time from randomization to solo 1 until the second recurrence that a, a woman might have, it also remains statistically significantly uh, improved for women who received Olaparib following frontline therapy with a hazard ratio of 0.5. And that's even more remarkable when you consider that a third of the women, 35% of the women who are randomized to placebo, received a PARP inhibitor as part of their next line of therapy. So they crossed over, in effect. And we still see this um, very statistically significant benefit in progression-free survival, too, which is not overall survival, but it is considered a surrogate for overall survival. So it does indicate to us that we're on the right track um, in terms of overall survival, but that's um, a very immature endpoint at this point and will be years before it results out. Um, uh, the toxicity profile was very consistent with what we have seen in other studies of Olaparib, uh, so very manageable, low-grade, uh, non-hematologic toxicities, and then manageable um, hematologic toxicities, with the main thing we see being, uh, um, the worst thing we see is grade three anemia and 21% very manageable with transfusions and dose modification if necessary.